Miss Marino. It is Monday, April 27th, 2020. And this is the way we're doing school this week again. <laughs> um, so this is the packet of April 27th. This should be given out today at STEAM and I believe they will also be giving them out tomorrow um, in case you can't make it today. But this is our new packet for the next two weeks. It goes up to May 8th. So um, I wanted to walk you through the pages and I want you to use this video just in case you get stuck on a page. You can always go back to this video and use it as a reference. That way I'm helping you um, understand the page or if you get stuck. And also remember that Wednesdays I will have um, optional help on Zoom from 11.30 to 12. So you can join if you need help. Um, more specifically, I want to leave those for math, but we'll get to that part um, in a minute. Okay, so you're going to start with your vocabulary. And as you can see... It's getting vocabulary from Unit 5, Week 4. And this week's vocabulary, cling, microscope, humid, dissolves, magnify, typical, mingle, and gritty. So out of all eight of these words, put a little X or circle the ones you do know. The ones, and by and be honest with yourself, the ones you know you can use in a sentence, you can use in daily vocabulary if you had to. Um, that way you know which words you want to focus. So you could say, for example, I didn't know what humid was. So that's a word I would focus on. It's like, okay, I need to learn what this word means and I want to be able to use it. So today I'm going to challenge myself to use it somewhere throughout my day. Um, and do that so you can build on your vocabulary. That's what this is for, okay? So find each sentence using the vocab, sorry, finish each sentence using the vocabulary word provided. Um, this is review, just new words, okay? Remember I taught you how to open dictionary.com as well if you need help with understanding or need the definition. Use synonyms to help you um, better clarify meanings as well. Then you have the sequence graph. Um, you're working on sequence. So remember, sequence tells us the way things happen in a story or in a text that they're given. So what happens first, next, then, finally. Um, so you have this graphic organizer, and you're going to use it for this story at your fingertips. Okay. And something I didn't mention before and I want to mention is you see these numbers? So this is helping your fluency. You want to be able to read this to yourself, and I would and I would whisper read it to myself. Um, in order to read, you want to put a timer next to you for one minute and see how far you can go in one minute. And maybe kind of practice it throughout the two weeks and see if you're you should be increasing. And you just want to do it for one minute. So let's say I'm reading for one minute and I stop right here on the word um, there. So here the line starts at 92, so it would be 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, and then um, 99. So I read 99 words a minute, okay? And then um, there's a page on the next side. Um, oh, that, oh, right here. This is where you could write 99 words per minute, okay? And don't worry about this. It's just kind of keeping track. And... You can do it two times, you can do it three times, but remember, when you read, it's not to be, what makes it different in your hair is your name, is it the shape of your eyes and nose, and all these may be important, however, there's one, you don't want to read like that, <laughs> okay, you want to read with fluent, you want to be fluent when you're reading, so yes, you want to read quickly, but remember, pausing at the punctuations, so in order for you to grasp the what the story is about because you're practicing your comprehension and you're also practicing fluency on this page and this is connected this is the continuation and again this these are the pages i would want you to annotate practice your annotation you have notes on that as well and then these are the questions that go with those um with the story so before you even read the story you should know what to do with these already 
And if you don't, you should read them first and then go read the story. <laughs> um, so that goes with that. And then this is that page that talks about the text. So this is something, um, a practice page to help you identify text features, okay? So they give you this small text here. They give you this image and then this image has a little caption here and the title. So using all that information only, the text, I'm sorry, the page asks you these four questions. Okay, how do you know this is an expository text? Well, spoiler alert, they already told you what an expository, that it's an expository text. What you should know is what is an expository text? Remember an expository text exposes you to information. Um, it's informative, it gives you knowledge. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, remember our genres in the class? Those were the yellow papers that I would hang up on the um, whiteboard. We had fiction, nonfiction, but remember under those for all these different categories as well. Okay, so that's how you would do that page. Oh, these are my favorite antonyms. Just remember antonyms, not synonyms, antonyms, opposite. Okay. So um, I'm supposed to draw a line. So if something is identical, what would be the opposite? Different. So I would literally just um, draw, oops. I would draw the line to different, okay? Um, so that's that page. Let me zoom out a little, okay? And then we have your spelling. So this is more our control vowel syllables. So it's talking about this right here. You see the word popular? The AR is an R control, but it's attached to, but it makes a vowel syllable, okay? It's attached to the vowel as well. Um, and then you're gonna be working with frequently misspelled words. So, um, so here, read the instructions and follow along here. But on B, it's the circle the correct word in the parentheses. To complete each sentence, use the dictionary to help you if, you're ne if it's necessary because you have then and then. Morale, morale. Uh, lay, lie. Effect, effect. Loose, loose. So some of these are homophones. Some of them you need to know the difference, like what's the difference between then and then, okay? Um, why did this move? Sorry, my page moved. <laughs> okay, so the next... Um, writing to source, right here you're just, they just want you to keep track of your... Um, what to do when you're writing. So let's read the instructions. Delia used text evidence from two different sources to answer the prompt. How do a, how do a drop of water and the incredible shrinking portion convince readers to look closely at something? Okay, so that's telling you what this is about. And then you just have to go and pick out what they tell you here. This should also be review. And then you have the following week. Um, the same thing here you have new words uncover expedition era document tremendous permanent evidence archaeology and um, I'm so I don't understand why my page moved so I'm trying to okay sorry again you have another sequence graphic organizer Again, you have another story, and this week, practice this. As you notice, they give you a shorter one the first week, and then they give you a little bit longer one the next week. So see how many words per minute you are able to do on here as well. Okay? Um, these are the questions that go along with the text that we previously just saw. 
again you are using this box to identify text features and you, here you're talking about informational text so I've always kind of group all that together expository informative um, so it's similar to the top one and then this page is fun so and I'm sorry I for some reason, I don't know why my page moved, but I don't want to stop the recording. So, um, this, these are almost like idioms, but you have, um, they're called proverbs and adages. So the diff the main thing about proverbs is they kind of teach you a lesson, but using, um, real life. So, and the adages, they're, the, they're like short sayings, okay? So, um, like little phrases. So, every man for himself, all good things must come to an end. Hard work pays off. Seeing is believing. So, um, it's telling you, you have to read the sentences and use your context clues to try to figure out what it means. And tell me right here in your own words what it means. Um, I might make this one of those pages that you have to um, turn it into Google Classroom. Hmm, maybe. Here is another spelling. You're working with consonants, not vowels, but the consonants, and then it ends with an L-E. So, for example, look at the word uncle here. The C would be your consonant, and then you have endings in L-E. Okay, so that's what you are identifying. You're identifying the words that have that. And then you're working with some um, suffixes. So remember, suffixes come at the end of the words. So here we're working with able, able, which means can be done. So whenever a word has these two suffixes at the end, it means it could be done. You will also be working with meant, which is the state, action, or result. So wonder meant, convincible, establishment, punishable, sellable, permissible. Okay. And you're supposed to give me the words. So, wonderment. Okay. The state or action of a result. So, um, you either can look it up in the dictionary or you can say it's the state of being in wonder. Right. So, you can write it that way as well. Um, and then again, you have writing, um, identifications of writing. For example, where's the main idea? Um, you need to do that page, okay? And this goes along with that. And then you have your cursive. Remember, in lieu of cursive, you, if you can practice your cursive, but you can also go into typing club and practice your typing. Remember, that's a skill that Ms. Marina always says you need. So, um, just FYI. Okay, so number like, ah, oh, okay. I might make a new video for the math just so I can set up my, um, oh, I didn't want to do that. Okay, yes, just so I can set up for a new video for this. Okay, so let me stop.